Welcome to a short video on setting up your Microsoft 365 passwordless authentication using the Microsoft Authenticator app. To do Microsoft 365 passwordless authentication, we do need to have the Microsoft Authenticator app installed on a mobile device. This is free and available from your App Store or your Play Store for your mobile. So let's go off and grab that and as you can see on the screen this is for an iPhone this is the uh, Apple App Store that we've got showing on the screen we've so we've searched for Microsoft Authenticator and we in my case this is already installed but your case the open button showing here would simply be um, installed so let's get that installed on our device and we'll move on to the next step so after installing the Microsoft Authenticator, the next step you'll get is add your first account. So click add account and then let's have a look at what happens. You'll see very likely a screen that says that recovery will be disabled on this device. Don't worry, it's only talking about this, this device, this application, the Authenticator app. So click continue and then let's get to the next step. Okay. Microsoft have a number of choices in terms of accounts that we can use. They have a personal account and they have a work or school account. In most cases, we're going to be choosing the work or school account because that's what we're using our authenticator for. It's for the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 account that's been provided by your work or by your school or your university to, um, to do your tasks and you need to sign in and choose the right one. If you choose personal account, then that's referring to a Microsoft personal account, typically a Hotmail or an Outlook.com or a Live.com account. And those are typically either free email accounts or the Microsoft 365 personal that you might buy from an Officeworks store or something like that. So here we're talking about our work or school account. So we've selected work or school account and we're going to sign in. Again, choose the work or school account and click the sign in button. Note that we can also use the Microsoft Authenticator for our other accounts like Google and Facebook and things like that. So we can actually consolidate our two factor authentications into one app, um, but we must use the Microsoft Authenticator app for doing the passwordless authentication with our Microsoft accounts. So moving on to the next screen, we get this, the login option. So here we're just going to simply sign in. When we sign in with our work account, here we've got Megan Bowen signing in to our demo account. Uh, Megan is signing in here. She's just simply going to put her email address in and click next. The system will prompt her for a password. Yes, I know we're doing passwordless authentication, but we need to set it up with a password initially. So put the password in there and we'll click next to move to, or click sign in to move to the next step. Now, this is where the system will want to verify that Megan is actually the right person to be signing in with this account. So here she's received a text to a phone number. Um, that phone number would have been set up by the IT organization, IT for the organization as being an authentication method for Megan. Uh, Megan may well also have already had the authenticator set up and may have received a push notification. She could simply press push to verify as well here. So in this case, we're going to put in the uh, highly secret code of one, two, three, four, five, six that we received via text message and we're going to click verify. The next screen has caused a couple of people to go hmm, or to wonder what's going on. The registration that's happening on this screen is simply, uh, it's a very basic registration. It is simply connecting Megan's identity with this authenticator app with this particular mobile device and telling the system in the back end that this is Megan's authenticator it's megan's sign in and we're connecting these this this authenticator app with megan's identity on the back end it's as simple as that it doesn't expose 
Megan's personal data on her phone, her family photos, or anything like that to the organization. It simply connects this Authenticator app to the organization so the organization knows that when Megan signs in, it knows which Authenticator to actually offer the codes to. So here, Megan's simply going to click register and she's going to move on to the next screen, which is going to show her that her account has been added and that her phone sign in to sign in without a password is is enabled two-step verification is enabled and once in two and one time uh, passcodes are also enabled so clicking finish takes us over to the next screen and we can see here that the authenticator has been set up for megan's contoso organization which is the demo organization you may see your own organization there instead and it shows her email address that's associated with it so let's review what megan's got by clicking on Megan's identity in the Authenticator app. And we'll see here that we've got passwordless is enabled, that there's a one-time password code enabled, that number of 862520 will change every 30 seconds. And there's a little countdown timer to the left showing that how long that code is going to remain valid. In Megan's case, because passwordless has been set up or phone sign-in has been set up, they are one and the same. Um, she has the option to disable it if she chooses. We recommend leaving this enabled because that's the whole point of what we're doing. However, if you had reached this point with your Authenticator app and you saw something there that didn't say disable, but rather it said set up, then that would mean that you could just simply tap that and set up your, your existing Authenticator to use passwordless authentication. And at that point, you would be given a couple of screens to register or check the registration and basically click finish. There's, it's a very simple process from there. You would just accept or allow whatever it needed to do. And then you'd be presented with the ability to sign in. So what happens when Megan signs into uh, Office 365 or Microsoft 365? Well, it's quite simple from here. When Megan signs in, the system is going to show Megan a number on the screen and then her authenticator app is then going to show her a selection of three or four numbers and she's just simply got to match the number that's shown on the screen with the number that's on her phone in the authenticator app. It's, re it's really simple to do and we'll have a look at that in action now. So here we can see that Megan has signed into the, uh, into the demo Office 365 tenancy and we can see that Megan's been offered the number 56. On Megan's phone, there is also a bunch of numbers showing. And we can hit, see here that we've got the option to choose number 56. If we tap 56 here, then we'll be taken to the next, next step in the process, which is to do a face ID or a touch ID or, or a fingerprint ID or something like that to sign into the... Um, environment and that would be considered the second factor of authentication she also has the option to deny and that would be an appropriate choice if megan was just simply having dinner with friends or was out and about and hadn't initiated any sort of sign in or wasn't expecting this to happen pressing deny would prevent the uh the attempt from being successful and would deny access to the organization's data or Megan's data within the organization. So let's have a look at the next screen. So we've, we've been presented uh, the option on the screen for signing in with number 56. We come over here to the authenticator and we tap on number 56 here. And then Megan is presented with the option where she has to do touch ID, so she'll just touch her finger on the phone, or it may be a face ID, so she could look at it with her phone, with her face and just approve it that way. And after that, we'll see that Megan has in fact actually signed into Office 365. So from there, Megan can access all of the things that she normally accesses. She can open documents, she can look at product lists, she can do all the things that Megan needs to do within her job. And that 
really is pretty much the end of it. It's it's that simple. From now on, when Megan signs into Office 365, she'll see a number like this on the screen. She'll be presented the same set of a similar set of numbers on her phone. She'll select the one that matches the screen. She'll do her face or touch ID or a pin, and that will sign her into Office 365. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, please like this on YouTube if you found it beneficial. And if you want some more information, you're welcome to come over to solvebusiness.com.au. And happy secure computing.